welcome to the 38th lecture of combinatorics. Uh, in the last class, we were discussing uh, the Catalan numbers and about balanced parentheses. parentheses. So, uh, they, if there are n pairs of brackets, right? So, so we saw that the number of ways to arrange them, right? Uh, balanced in a balanced way. Uh, is the Catalan number namely 1 by n plus 1 uh, c n uh, 2 n choose n right c n n Catalan number. Now, consider uh, some n plus 1 numbers a a 2 a 3 a 4 say a n plus 1 right. Now, uh, this parenthesis may be to evaluate the product say take some example a 1 a 2 a 3, A 4, A 5. So, you may multiply this together first, then you may multiply this and this together, then you may multiply this and this, then finally, this and this may be multiplied. So, how many pairs for 5 numbers? So, 1, 2, 3, 4. So, for n numbers, sorry, n plus 1 numbers, we will need n pairs of parentheses to, uh, to complete the multiplication. Not that we keep this order, we do not multiply a 1 with a 4 in the beginning and things like that. So, this uh, the order in which the numbers a 1, a 2, a 3, a 4, a 5 etcetera are given is important, we do not change them, right. Just that we just uh, we can start our multiplication process from anywhere in that or in that the way it is written, right. Now, uh, you see this question also how many ways you can multiply this multiplication schemes how many ways you can do this thing uh, also uh, will be the nth kettle number for when we consider n plus 1 numbers right why is it so because you know if you consider the last parenthesis which always like this so which will correspond to the multiplication of the last two numbers right so this first number in this thing may be uh, right for instance we created one number here created one number here so and then we multiply them together. This is the last one, right? So, uh, or no, this is the nth multiplication, right? So now, uh, this so we will have uh, a pair of parentheses uh, here, a pair of parentheses here, right? Now within this thing, we, we are multiplying k numbers, say a one to a k. And here we are multiplying a k plus 1 all the way to a n plus 1 that is n plus 1 minus k numbers right. So, now if I represent by t n uh, or say so to make it faster I will say that uh, so t n represents the number of so, the uh, multiplication schemes when we consider n plus 1 numbers a n to n plus 1, right. Then I say this t n uh, can be written as, right. So, the product of k equal to 0 to uh, n minus 1. Uh, so, the, uh, it would be easier to, so maybe easier to understand, we will say, we will call it t n plus 1 when we have n plus 1 numbers and then later change it. So, t n plus 1 uh, is which corresponds to this thing uh, when we are multiplying n plus 1 numbers, right. Now, as we have seen here, the final multiplication when we consider there are k numbers being multiplied, first k numbers being multiplied to produce one number and the remaining n plus 1 minus k numbers being multiplied to produce the second number and finally, we are multiplying them together. But this can be done in t k ways and this can be done in t n plus 1 minus k ways, right. So, but note that uh, k can be 1 to up to uh, n, right. So, uh, t n plus 1 will be equal to, I will write like this, t n plus 1 is equal to uh, k can be 1 to n, right. So, t 1 into t 
n plus 1 sorry t k into t n plus 1 by k. So, for instance, it, it first if there is only 1 in the first side then is t 1 into t n. So, if there are 2 of them it is t 2 into t n minus 1 and so on right or we multiply uh, a 1 up to a n first and then multiply it with a n plus 1 then this is t uh, n into t 1 ok like that. Now, we will not this recurrence uh, seems to be the very similar to the one um, which we wrote for Catalan numbers. So, just that we are starting from 1 to n. So, for we just note that this will this is identical to C n. For instance, if I write T n plus 1 equal to C n right then we can write the recurrence relation as k equal to 0 to n minus 1 right. So, because this will become T 0 and this will become T uh, n plus 1 minus k minus 1 that is n T n minus k right sorry yeah T n minus k the other n plus 1 minus k of them we have n minus k things here. But only thing is here see yeah, so I we have to start with So, this is the equation. So, we will. So, this is like when we multiply uh, one element that is T 1 into T yeah, this is T n plus 1 is equal to T 1 into T n plus then t 2 into t n minus 1 plus up to t n into t 1. But here actually there is no multiplication we can call this as c 0 and this is actually uh, t n minus 1 right and uh, this can be called t 1 sorry c c 0 c 0 we are just reducing one c 0 sorry c 0 into c n minus 1 and this is t t 2 can be called c 1 and this can be called uh, c n minus 2 and so on this is c n minus 1 into c 0 right this is this will correspond to just c n right. So, this is exactly the recurrence relation we had for the Catalan numbers. So, we just identified that T n plus 1 is same as C n right. Okay. So, therefore, uh, and also the initial conditions we will see that uh, T 1 is actually equal to c 0. So, t 1 is this is just no multiplication, but uh, we can define it as 1 right c 0 is 1 and then um, uh, t 2 is equal to there and there are 2 2 numbers then it is again c 1 is uh, 1 right and yeah t 3 if you look t 3 is equal to when there are 3 numbers a 1, a 2, a 3 how many ways you can do it right. So, we can do it in c 2 ways, 2 ways why because either you can multiply this first and then multiply with this thing or you can multiply a 2 and a 3 together and then multiply with this thing there are 2 different ways of doing this. So, the initial conditions are same. So, therefore, 
um, we see that um, this will give you the Catalan numbers once again, right? So it's, so it's essentially the the it is equal to the number of balanced parentheses, so right? When n plus one numbers are there, we have n pairs of balanced parentheses. So why we are defining t one equal to zero because this recurrence relation also wants this, right? We are if you define t one is equal to zero, then this is not valid, right? Because we have one multiplication in corresponding to this term, right? T one has to be equal to one. Uh, though uh, it's just a matter of definition, right? To product uh, to get the product, right? Because we are just taking a one, and then the remaining things are all multiplied together. Now, if this was zero, then that term, right? How many? Uh, possible ways so that will become 0 into something that will become 0, but we need 1 as the answer, right. So, sorry, uh, right, we, we want T n as the answer, right. We have, we have this many ways and then produce it with uh, this one multiplication, right, the final multiplication, right. So, for each corresponding multiplications to produce this product, we should get uh, 1 as the answer. So, we have to have uh, T 1 is equal to 1, right. So, therefore, uh, this follows exactly the same initial conditions as the Catalan numbers, uh, just that we are, we have to define T n plus 1 equal to T n, C n and uh, the recurrence relation is same, therefore, uh, we get the Catalan numbers nth Catalan numbers as the answer to the number of multiplication schemes possible for uh, multiplying a 1 to a n plus 1. Now, uh, we can there is another question where uh, um, yeah, so this is the question. So, so find the number of ways to divide a convex polygonal region with n plus 2 sides into triangular regions by inserting diagonals that do not intersect the interior. So, what we mean is, so you consider say this is a polygon, right. So, we can triangulate it by putting some diagonals, by inserting some diagonals, say something like this. So, we can put a diagonal like this. So, this got, so all are now triangular regions. This is a triangle, this is a triangle. Now, this is also a triangle, right. So, similarly, so now let us say, so this, this is a polygonal region. So, we can triangulate in uh, say maybe one, so one diagonal can be added here, another diagonal can be added here. Say now another diagonal can be added here and uh, say another diagonal can be added here. So, this is a way, one way of triangulating this thing. So, the question is given a polygon with n sides, uh, how many ways we can triangulate this, but not that we are putting always diagonals, right, in, uh, internal diagonals, right, we do not, so the, this kind of things, but they, they, they do not intersect with each other, we never draw, so once you draw like this, we cannot draw something like this, this is not allowed, right. So, how many ways you can do this thing, this is the question. So, now of case, so, we just for the uh, for the ease of presentation, let us take uh, n a polygon with uh, n plus 2 sides, right. So, so, 2 sides sides and then we will note that this is somehow similar to the problem of evaluating the expression. Suppose, so we will we start this this is the first side second side third side fourth side fifth side sixth side and this is the n plus 2 side now i'll put a1 here a2 here a3 here a4 here a5 here a6 here and uh, um, till this will be this will be a n plus 1 so we take this n plus 1 numbers and write like this now, if we decide to multiply two numbers, say a3 and a4, then we can draw this diagonal here, which means that this is a multiplication of a3 into a4, right. 
uh, for instance and also if you are try deciding to multiply a 5 and uh, a 6 then we draw a diagonal like this a 5 and a 6. Now, if I want to multiply a 2 with a 3 and a 4 I will draw a diagonal here which corresponds to a 2 into a 3 into a 4 right. So, this this so diagonal uh, corresponds to that. So, now see if I draw a diagonal here this would correspond to or maybe I can take uh, yeah. So, this n plus 2 let us without loss of generality this is 6 and 7 this is 8 right. Now, if I draw this thing this is a 8 in a 7 into a 8 and uh, now if I draw this thing this will become a 1 in sorry this a 8 is not there. So, we have till here this is not this is not given up to a n plus 1 only we are using this is kept blank right. So, now, so we, we can we can put it like this um, or maybe for a change we can take this diagonal. This will correspond to a 2 into a 3 into a 4 right this is this diagonal into this. So, into a 5 into a 6. So, this this way we can represent this multiplication schemes for corresponding to each multiplication scheme we will get one um, triangulation right corresponding to each triangulation we can get a multiplication scheme also right. So, I would uh, uh, let you work out this details right rather than so it is uh, rather than wasting time drawing this thing, but I just wanted to give you the picture that uh, corresponding to each way of multiplying we can keep drawing the diagonals and get a triangulation in the end. Finally, here we will get the entire answer right because here this will come and so this into this will be copied here so so this will this will represent the product of a1 into this one and this will represent the product of this into this like that so finally here we will get the uh, final expression the, the full with full parentheses right uh, did not i mean indicating how we can complete the multiplication scheme so rather than uh, see we you have to work out the details of this bijection between uh, the multiple multiplication schemes discussed in the previous problem and this one. So, not that there are here there are n plus 2 sites in the previous problem there are n plus 1 numbers right. So, now these n plus 1 numbers are written on the first uh, n plus 1 side up to here and this last one is for the final answer right final parenthesized express expression right. So, and so the number of ways to triangulate uh, a polygon uh, of n plus 2 sides will correspond, correspond to the multiplication schemes for n plus 1 numbers and which will essentially be C n. So, we will want to write say T n plus 2 is equal to C n right this is what we want, but um, we can also directly see this thing for this is C n uh, for instance if you look at uh, a polygon and one way to uh, write the recurrence relation is uh, right. see once you triangulate and just look at this uh, side this has to be part of one triangle right. It is not possible that uh, the side is not part of any triangle after the after we fully triangulate this convex uh, polygonal region right. So, uh, you Note that I have not mentioned what is convex, because convex see the shape should be similar which formally it means that if you draw a uh, take any two points inside the region and draw then that full line will be inside. Uh, for instance, if I consider this kind of a polygon this is not convex because if I take uh, this point and this point and then draw a line this line will go outside the polygon right. So, therefore, this is not convex but this kind of polygons are convex here right see uh, whichever two points I take inside and draw a line between them that will be fully inside this thing. So, that is what is convex. So, uh, I thought so you will be familiar with this concept from geometry. So, uh, now 
let us say coming back. So, here we have uh, this side and this after fully triangulating this convex region. So, this should be part of one triangle right. Now, let us say so what is the other end point of this triangle the triangle which contains this one right. So, the other end point can be this it can be this or 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 it can be this right there are so many possibilities for each possibility we will decide for in typically so for instance if this was the uh, other end point now we have got one triangular region now it is clear that we can triangulate this polygon say that this polygon and multiply the number of ways of triangulating this polygon with the ways of triangulating this polygon right that will give you uh, the number of triangulations of this polygon such that this triangle finally comes right. So, so for like that depending on where this this vertex comes that means this other end point of this triangle which contains this side comes we can get all the schemes. So, we start from here. So, when we start from here, so what happens is it will look like this. So, it will look like this the first triangle this is the triangle, but on this side we have a uh, because its total number of sides is n plus 2. So, once you remove this thing we have a polygon with uh, n sides sorry n plus 1 sides right because 2 are removed, but 1 is added. So, T n plus 1 will be the number of ways to triangulate this portion. While after removing this thing this side we do not have anything, but we can say that it is a just a single edge polygon that is a polygon with two sides though such a polygon does not exist we will define a T 2 the number of ways to triangulate a polygon like this. We will just say that T 2 is equal to 1 to make this recurrence work because we need the number of uh, ways to triangulate is actually the number of ways to triangulate this portion right. So, for corresponding to each each triangulation of this thing we can add this uh, triangle and uh, we get one valid triangulation of this entire thing. So, this we will define T 2 is equal to 1 right. Now, the next case is when you take the vertex to be here. So, then it will look like this. So, now this will be T because here we have this triangle right this this triangle. So, this triangle is uh, T 3 right T uh, because it is a triangle it is a it is a it is a polygon with 3 sides T 3 is the number of ways to triangulate it. We know that T 3 is again 1 because in a tri given a triangle you can only triangulate it in one way. So, there is same namely that keeping it just like that and on the other side we have uh, you know T n plus 1 minus. So, how much how many will be there? So, so we are because here 1, 2, 3 are gone, but 1 is put back. So, we have uh, T n right because total so, in this side we have 3 lost here, but 1 added. So, I mean total 2 lost T n plus 2 minus T n plus 2 minus 2 that means T n. So, next will be when when we allow the vertex to be here right. So, now here we have a 4 sided triangle that will be T 4 and we have T n minus 1 and so on till finally, we will reach to T n plus 1 into T 2 in the end right. So, now if you this is going to be T n plus 2 right, but now define uh, suppose you identify that T n plus 2 is equal to C n then we can rewrite this as uh, C n is equal to this will become C n here C n is equal to that T 2 will become T C 0 C 0 and uh, uh, T n will become um, T n plus 1 will become uh, C n minus 1 
and then C1. So, T3 will become C1 and uh, Tn will become C n minus 2 and so on. Finally, this will become C n minus 1 into C0, right. This is the same recurrence, recurrence relation as we had for uh, the Catalan numbers and the initial conditions are same as we have seen because this T2 is going to be C0 is equal to 1 as we, we defined it and T3 uh, is equal to C1 is equal to 1 as we have seen because the once you are given a polygon of 3 sides it cannot it can be triangulated in only one way and so the initial conditions being same so and the recurrence relation being same the this T n is going to be equal to our nth Catalan number namely 1 by n plus 1 into 2 n choose n. So, this is what. So, I this we stop the discussion of uh, Catalan number with this last example that is it. So, um, in this final problem we try to sketch out two proofs one is to um, show that the basic recurrence relation underlying recurrence relation is the same. The other thing was to get a mapping to the previous problem namely the number of ways to uh, put parenthesis so that we can multiply it out right. So, it is a 1 to a n plus 1 right the number of multiplication schemes keeping that order uh, intact right. So, but that is easy you just you can just easily work work out how uh, it can be done the bijection can be set up right. So, these are the two um, two methods we used to say that the number of ways to triangulate uh, the conve convex polygon of n plus 2 sides is actually C n namely the nth Catalan number. So, we will go to another topic now. So, namely the Stirling numbers of Stirling numbers of the second kind, second type, second kind, right. So, we will discuss about the first kind later. So, Stirling. Uh, so, is for James Sterling and um, yeah this is this is the way we define it. So, this counts the number of partitions of a set of P elements into K indistinguishable boxes in which no box is empty. So, we have number called S of P comma K right. So, we will have uh, P say number say 1, 2, 3. So, different objects P different objects we want to put them into K indistinguishable boxes. So, they the boxes cannot be distinguished from each other by looking from outside right k of them 1, 2, 3. So, they are not labeled ok. So, there are k of them right. Now, we want to distribute this p things in this k boxes. There are two conditions one is each box has to get at least one each of this k boxes has to get at least one. Second condition is the boxes are uh, indistinguishable that means, uh, we cannot tell suppose if you take do 1, 2 here and uh, 3, 4 here, 5, 6 here and so on and then if I take 1, 2 from here and put it here and then 3, 4 here that is not going to make any difference. So, as far as an outsider sees it will be the same because he sees 1, 2, 1 and 2 together in one box, 3 and 4 together in one box, right. So, you have to change say for instance, if you take 3 from here and put with 1, so you make it 1, 3 
and put 2 4 here then that is different because you will see that okay this was different from the because earlier it was 1 and 2 was always together right but now he does not see 1 with 2 1 1 3 is coming together right. So, it is essentially you want to decompose p into k subsets non empty subsets right in how many ways you can uh, do this thing this 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 is what this count is given by s p k. So, some of the uh, simple observations we can make about so given a p so let us say p is at least 1. So, there is no uh, point about distributing uh, 0 things into something right. So, okay, you can or negative things into something we will just say if p can be 0, but let us say p is uh, something and then if you consider uh, s p 0 right. If this will be if p was equal to 0 then it is ok we can put 1 right if p equal to 0 we can put 1 because 0 things can be put in 0 boxes in one way. But if p was greater than 0 if p is greater than 0 then this has to be 0 because if there is at least one object and these 0 boxes we cannot distribute them um, into 0 boxes right. So, therefore, this is 0. So, S p 0 is equal to um, S p 0 is equal to 0 for p greater than equal to 1 S p 0 0 we will take it as 0 and another thing is S p 1 what will be S p 1 sorry what will be S p 1 there are p objects and uh, there are there is just one box right see uh, the point is if p 0 or something then we cannot put it in one box. So, that is this has to be 0 because you know this box has to be non empty finally right. So, therefore, uh, we will assume that p is greater than uh, equal to 1 we will assume that uh, yeah p is greater than equal to this number because yes if i consider s p k uh, where k is less than p then if every sorry if k is uh, greater than p then if every box has to be non empty we cannot do that so it then it this will become zero right so therefore we will assume that uh, uh, now for s whenever we consider s p k this p is greater than equal to k. So, that we can keep every box non empty that is one my major concern right. So, with that condition s p 1 so p 1 we want to put p objects in one box right. So, that can be done only in one way we have to put everything in that same box right there is no other way to do it. Now, uh, another thing uh, what about SPP so on special cases when P equal to K right SPP. So, the only way is because every box has to be non empty we have to give one object each to each of the boxes because there are exactly P boxes there are only P objects then this has to be one there is only one way to do that one object each to each box. So, we cannot see for instance these are these p boxes we can put 1 here, 2 here, 3 here, 4 here. So, you may wonder why why cannot I put 4 here and 2 here uh, will not it give a produce a different arrangement no it will not because the boxes are indistinguishable. So, whether you keep the box here or here it does not matter what matters is the content inside the box. So, as far as we are concerned this 1, 2, 3, 4 is partitioned into the subsets, one, subsets 1, 2, 3 and 4 right. There is uh, whether you uh, write this subset first or this subset first is unimportant because as far as they are concerned they are. So, this is the way we have partitioned this thing into subset that is only one way of doing it right. So, that is SPP uh, therefore, has to be 1 right. 
now what about sp2 what about sp2 now sp2 there are p objects and there are two boxes so the question is in how many ways this p objects uh, can be split into two subsets so it's easy to see that for instance you you try to take phi as a subset that's not allowed because the boxes has to be uh, so what i do is i just for the time being i'll assume that this is the first this is the second so though the boxes are indistinguishable so if i take phi and try to dis put it put here phi out of p an empty set out of p it's not allowed so it has to be non empty set and not only that we cannot take the entire uh, p and uh, the entire set of objects and put in this thing because if i do that this will remain empty that's also not allowed right so this this apart from this two any other subset of this thing can be taken uh, which are actually two raised to p minus two possible subsets like that uh, ex excluding the empty set and the universe full set right so this many are there if you give any of those subsets here the remaining can be given here both then both will be non empty the only thing is that so if i give an a here and uh, say p minus a here where a is some subset of a is some non empty subset of uh, p where a is not equal to p right then we are also counting this case p minus a is here and uh, a is here right but you know because this boxes are indistinguishable this a being here and p minus a being here is the same as p minus a being here and a being here so we are over counting so we have to divide by 2 because so for every pair we are we are counting twice so therefore the final answer will be 2 raised to p minus 1 minus 1 uh, this is this is going to be this one right this many ways of doing it at p greater than equal to 2 this is valid for p greater than equal to 2 right so p was 1 then we know we can't put it at all because we cannot keep uh, it no no so that will be 0 for if you put 1 also this will work 2 raised to 0 minus 1 now the next one uh, s p p minus 1 what about s p comma p minus 1 so we have p minus 1 boxes p minus 1 boxes now p things are to be distributed here yeah p minus 1 boxes are there we have p things and we have to distribute uh, this p things into p minus 1 boxes how many ways we can so you can see that because there are p minus 1 boxes it is very clear that uh, each and each box has to be empty so we have exactly one box in which uh, two objects appear and all other boxes have just one object right so the kind of uh, part uh, partitioning into subsets this p is to be partitioned to subsets the kind of partitions we are looking for is uh, subsets we are looking for is one so p minus two singleton sets p minus two singleton sets and just one two element set this is this kind of partition system so to count this thing it's very easy to see that we just have to decide which uh, two elements go into the bigger set right and the remaining things can be put singleton right that can be done only in one way so for each selection of these two then we have one po uh, valid um, partition right partitioning of this p objects so assignment of this p objects into boxes so how will you decide these two objects so out of p we we can select 
p in p choose two ways these two elements then once you select those two two elements we put them together and all the remaining objects we put one each into the remaining p minus 2 boxes so therefore sp of p minus 1 is equal to p choose 2 right so these are some of the Yeah, this will work for right. So, we will for instance if you are taking p equal to 1 box, so p, there is just one object it should be put into 0 box then it is 0. So, here we will see that 1 choose 2 is 0. So, that is correct from p is p greater than or equal to 1 onwards. If p is equal to 2 what happens is we have to put 2 objects into 1 box that will can be done only in one way that is uh, 2 choose 2 is going to be 1 right. So, we can verify some uh, initial cases. So, that is all correct and uh, so yeah this was some example to make you familiar with the uh, this concept this no new concept namely sp comma k this is uh, sp comma k right so we are putting um, the numbers 1 2 up to p into k boxes such that none of the k boxes are empty and these boxes are indistinguishable right how many ways you can do this is what it is now this sp k satisfy one recurrence relation will let us let us look at what this is. We will take two things as initial conditions namely S p comma p equal to 1 as we have seen before. Uh, if there are p boxes and only p things we can only uh, assign them to boxes in one way right because we are not uh, distinguishing between the boxes it is just that each one goes to a different box that is the only arrangement right. So, the um, another condition is for S p 0 is equal to 0 when p is greater than 0 and is equal to 1 if p equal to 0 right. These are the two initial conditions we have already discussed this thing and uh, the recurrence relation we claim is this S p k is equal to k times s of p minus 1 times k plus s of p minus 1 times k minus 1. So, to this is true for k for 1 and uh, p minus 1. So, we are not giving this recurrence relation for k equal to 0 because we have already defined the it is an initial condition sp 0 right. This is 1 or 0, 0 if p equal to 0 otherwise p greater than equal to 0 this is 1 right. Similarly, we are not giving for k equal to p case because s p p is equal to 1 this is given as an initial condition right. So, now uh, for the remaining numbers for when k is in between 1 and p minus 1 we are defining this right. Uh, we, are, we are claiming that this is a recurrence relation valid for spk. Why is this valid for spk right. So, this is because so the, the what does spk mean? spk mean we have p numbers say uh, distinct objects and we want to assign them to k boxes uh, these boxes being indistinguishable. So, we just take the last number namely p we just separate it out right and the remaining numbers say 1 2 uh, p minus 1 right. So, now we will take remaining numbers are this. So, we will take two cases. So, some of the arrangements may have this number last number p as a singleton set right. So, it may have p like this and uh, then the remaining 1 to p minus 1 gets distributed to k minus 1 different objects. The question is this p minus 1 things 
uh, in how many ways we can distribute into k minus 1 different objects that will count the special case namely where this p comes as a singleton set this comes as a singleton set. So, this is actually p minus 1 uh, is objects are to be distributed to k minus 1 indistinguishable boxes. So, this number is s of p minus 1 k minus 1 right. So, that counts the kind of partitions where this comes as a single transit. Now, uh, look uh, the this may not be the case. So, it, we have to the remaining partitions are such that this p always comes with something else. So, we never have p alone. So, p may come with something or maybe with 1 or maybe 1 and 2 or p may be coming with 3 and 4 or p may be coming with 1 and 5 so something like this right. So, but p never comes alone. So, what we do is we just remove p and then we see uh, k non empty boxes again because p was never singleton. Uh, so, if the, when you remove p we, we do not make that box empty right. So, what we can do is to get the number of partitions. So, we can uh, ask how many possible ways are there to put this 1 to p minus 1 into k boxes so that no box is empty and then put p back into the system right. This can be done in s of p minus 1 comma k ways clearly, but now how will you put back p? p can go into any of the non empty boxes right available, but there are k non empty boxes. So, there are k possible ways to insert p right. So, the total number of partition is this plus this. So, we get s p k is equal to s p k equal to s of p minus 1 comma k minus 1 plus k times s of p minus 1 comma k right. So, if you have difficulty in remembering this one thing you can observe is that if this k was not there it is just like the recurrence relation for binomial coefficients for instance uh, it will be like it is like this. So, p choose k binomial coefficients right p choose k is equal to p minus 1 choose k plus p minus 1 choose k minus 1, but here this term this term with k uh, as the lower index is getting multiplied by k here right. So, here see this corresponds to this and this corresponds to this and then here this is getting a multiplier that is only difference otherwise this is this is exactly like this. So, you can remember that so, when you want to write the recurrence relation as p k, you can write it like the binomial one and then insert that k there. Now, think or if you think about the proof, it is very easy. So, you just have to remember that we are partitioning it into two ways. The, the partitions where p comes as a singleton sets and the partitions where p never comes as a singleton set. And if p comes as a singleton set, without that we have this many possible ways of putting the remaining p minus 1 things into k minus 1 boxes that none of them are non empty sorry empty. So, and uh, if p uh, is always has to be with something else then we can take p minus 1 things and put them into k different uh, boxes k boxes which are indistinguishable uh, that can be done in this way and insert p in k, k ways this is what it is. And uh, the next thing we want to discuss, yeah. So, the next uh, thing we want to discuss is something called difference sequences. So, this we are discussing because of uh, the reason that this is somehow connected with uh, the Stirling numbers of the second kind, right. So, we will um, we will build up 
the concept first and then we will bring out the connection. So, so now consider a sequence like H0, H1, H2, H3. So, this is sequence. Now, we will say that the first order difference sequence for this first order difference sequence. for this given sequence h0, h1, h2, h3 is uh, given by delta of h0, delta of h1, delta of h2, delta of h3 and so on, where this delta of h0 is what? That is h1 minus h0. So actually, we are taking the uh, difference between this and this, that is what this delta of h0 is and difference between this and this will be the uh, delta of h1 h2 minus h1 right that is what here and this difference will be this and this difference will be delta of h3 and so on right and uh, for instance i can consider some example so let's consider uh, say hn equal to 2n square plus 3n plus 1 right now, what would be the sequence? Put n equal to, so this sequence I will write like this h1, h2, h3. So, put n equal to 0, we will get 1. Put n equal to 1, we will get uh, 6, right. Put n equal to 2, we will get 8 plus 6, four, uh, 8, 8 plus 6, 14 plus 1, 15, right. So, uh, if you put 4, we will get, uh, sorry, 3, so 9 into 2, 18 plus 9, uh, 27 plus 1, 28 and so on. The next one, H4 will be equal to 45 and so you can work it out. So, and uh, we will write delta H0 here. We will write delta H1 here, we will write delta H2 here, this delta H3 here and so on. Why? Because delta H0 is actually the gap here, the difference here that means 5 here, 6 minus 1. Delta H1 is the difference here that is 9 and uh, delta H2 is this 15, so 13. and this is 45 minus 28 um, namely 17 this is what. Now, we can define the different sequence of this sequence right this 5, 9, 13, 14 8. that will be the second order second order different sequence for uh, H n because Actually, what is the second order delta square of H0? This is delta of delta of H0. So, in which case delta of H0 is 5 here. So, delta of H0 is what? So, this will be delta of uh, yeah, th this will be written as because this can be written as delta of h1 minus delta of h0 which is actually this h2 minus h1 minus h1 minus h0 which is h2 minus 2 h1 plus h0. But when you write the table it is easy because you just have to minus this from this right. So, we have written 1, 6, 15, 28 like that. So, we can just write, um, we do not have to go to the first sequence, we can write it from the second sequence. We will write delta of square of H0 here, delta square of H1 here, delta square of H2 here and so on. This will be 4, 9 minus 5, this will be 13 minus 9 which is 4 right and the third one 
17 minus 13 4 and so on. Now, we can define the third order difference sequence namely delta cube of h as delta of delta square of h. That means, delta of cube of h 0 will be delta square of h 0 minus. So, delta square of delta of delta h 0 which is essentially uh, delta square of h 1 minus delta square of h 0. Here 4 minus 4 0 that will be this 4 minus 0 this will be 0 this will be 0 and so on. Now, we can always uh, in this way we can define the pth order difference sequence by uh, defining it as c delta p of h 0 will be defined as delta of delta p minus 1 of h 0 which is actually delta p minus 1 of h 1 minus delta p minus 1 of h 0 right. So, if we keep on writing the tables first uh, we have h 0, h 1, h 2, h 3, h 4 etcetera the first sequence which can also be written as delta 0 of h 0 if you so prefer you can write this as delta 0 of h 0, delta 0 of h 1, delta 0 of h 2 and so on just define delta 0 of h i is equal to just h i right. So, there is no difference. Now, here we can write delta of h 0, this is delta of h 1, this is delta of h 2, this is delta of h 3 and so on. And here we can write delta square of h 0, this is delta square of h 1, this is delta square of h 2 and so on. This is delta square of this is if you take the difference between these two we will get delta cube of uh, h 0, this delta cube of h 1 and so on. So, this is the concept of pth order different sequences. So, we can keep on writing this different sequences. So, but we have seen that in the previous example when we reached uh, the uh, this is the 0th line where 0th order difference uh, equation namely the sequence itself is written it is a 0th line um, and this is the first line this is the when where the pth order uh, difference sequence is written that is the pth line right. Here uh, second order was written that becomes a constant right second order 4 4 4 4 like that and third order was taken it was already 0 everything was 0. So, when we started with a polynomial if h n was 2 n square plus 3 n plus 3 is a polynomial of uh, degree 2 by the third order difference equation is becoming 0 0 what is the reason for that. In the next class we will see that uh, if uh, the general term is given by a polynomial of degree k then the k throw will k plus 1 throw onwards it will be 0 we will prove it in the next class.